This is Nasha Kasha Ukrainian Almanac. 28 minutes of stories for everyone about Ukrainian life. We begin with a tour of North Winnipeg. I'll introduce you to two longtime residents. We'll debate the difference between a sweet potato and a yam. Because I am who I am. That would be Stefan Andrusiak. This episode first aired in November 2018. So we're just passing Cathedral here, which... Uh is more of a upscale part of the North End, and then we're heading towards Point Douglas, a poorer part of the North End. And here's the Orthodox Cathedral on the left. Mm-hmm. We cross Redwood Avenue. Oh, over there is the uh, Hesed Shalem Synagogue. Swing a right, if we can, on Pritchard. That's Saint Ivan Suchevsky. Every Thursday, you, you you can buy great pierogies there. You can see how Winnipeg changed. That used to be a Jewish old people's manor here on my left. That is now an indigenous addiction center. It's a lovely, well-treated area. Yes, yeah, it's a very old area. Uh, This is Norquay Park that was named after John Norquay, the first Métis premier of, of Manitoba. And we are here on Lorne Avenue. Right over here is, is, is the house where I grew up. You remember playing on this street? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, a lot of fun. So Ukrainian kids, Jewish kids, Polish kids yeah. all together? Yes. Now now it's about 90% indigenous. But that, that's public housing. This used to be a Ukrainian labor temple here. The, the, the small building here, and, and now it's the Holy Ascension Greek Orthodox Church. And the labor temple was a communist organization? Yeah. Passing the Bell Hotel, one of the first uh, properties owned by the Bronfman family. Many Ukrainians started hotels and... and, uh, Yes, yes. uh, There was a hotel up the street here, the the, the Manor Hotel. At at one time, this Main Street strip had more bars per meter than any street in Canada. Hello, my name is John Paskovich, and I'm at the North End Salisbury House in Winnipeg. And uh, I'm being very rude and unprofessional because I ask you a question, and then I start eating my yam fries while you're talking. Well, uh, that's a good uh, advertisement for the Salisbury House yam fries. Yam? Is this yam? Yam? What's the difference between a sweet potato and a yam, do you know? Same thing. Same thing. Okay. Yeah. Sweet potato is a yam? I did not know that. I think you should make a documentary about this. Yams? Well, whether it's the same thing. I think there's an investigation to be had. Uh, well, you know, actually, I was thinking that uh, I was going to go on a Y diet. You can eat anything in any language which starts with uh, Y. Yaichi, yams, yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> The name of our restaurant where we're having our meeting is the uh, North End Salisbury House. Euphemistically, or I don't know if that's a proper a term, called Sal's. I'll see you at Sal's, I'll see you at the Sal's. When I was in high school, there were, there, this place was always packed. There, there were political discussions, uh, sports the, the sports discussions, there were, there were on, on the weekends, fights in a parking lot with the folks from the south end of the city. What, what's what's the difference between a South Winnipegger and uh, it's Winnipegger, right? Not Winnipegonian. What's the difference between a South Winnipegger and a North Winnipeg? Usually, most of the people in in the South are uh, more economically advantaged, ha- have more money. It, 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 it's economically and the, the the mythology of the North End. The, 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 this is where all the new immigrants all always came. Burton Cummings lived up the street here. How long have you been coming here? Well, I, I've been coming here off and on uh, since high school. Yeah, yeah, no, 
Born in Austria, I, I came to Winnipeg, uh, more specifically Lockport, in 1950. We we stayed here for for less than a year, and, and then we moved to Montreal. I lived in Montreal for about six or seven years, uh, I, I, and then we came back here when I was 12. What determined your road as a filmmaker? When when did you know that that's what you wanted to do? Photograph, be a photographer, and a filmmaker. Uh, it, it was late in coming, actually. It, it was uh, in, in my early 20s. I finished the university, and, and I, I, I didn't what to. Well, I didn't know what to do. So I, I was kind of wandering, or wandering, wandering around. I, I spent a year in Montreal, and, and then I went to Europe for a year. And uh, when I went to Europe, I, I picked up a camera, and I found th that I enjoyed taking pictures. I applied at Humber College in Toronto for, for the photo arts department. Uh, I was rejected there, so uh, I didn't know what to do, and I applied at Ryerson, and I was accepted at, at Ryerson. And, now, and Ryerson that, was a polytechnic, kind of, and was, now it's a university. Yeah, yeah, it's a higher school. There were uh, Ryerson and the Rochester Institute of, uh, uh, of Technology in New York were the two best photo art schools in North America. Can you walk me through your professional years? When, when, when I finished, I, I, I didn't know what to do f photographically. Uh, I came back home f for, for a visit, and uh, I was away from Winnipeg for about, I don't know, three years or so, and, and I noticed that the demographics in Winnipeg had changed. Uh, the uh, indigenous people from the reserves were starting to move in a lot. And at the same time, the Slav, Slavic people were older, and they were they were moving out. So I noticed a, a demographic change, and I said, "Hmm, this is interesting. Some somebody should should document this." And I applied for a a Canada Council grant, and and, and I got the grant, and, and so I I stayed in Winnipeg, and I've been here ever since. At, at first, it wasn't a film I was doing. It was ju just a photography, still pictures. After I, I, I did that, I made a, a film on a grocery store in the, in, in the North End with that same theme. So that's on the NFB website. It's called Ted Barrelly's yeah. Grocery Store. What was it like working for the NFB? That must have been in its heyday. Oh, in, in its heyday, it was a lot of fun. There, 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 there were some... Excellent people there. There are just, just some excellent insp inspirational people. People, I'll mention their names, Wolf Koenig, Tom Daly, Roman Kreuter, Colin Lowe. That, that, that was a wonderful experience, yeah. It must have taken a great deal of courage as a filmmaker to say, and I'm going to try to work for the NFP and succeed. Uh, I, 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 I actually didn't take, take any courage at all because I had no idea what uh, I had no idea what I was doing, and as a rookie, you, you don't have that any pressure. You, you're just having fun. At least I, that's how I felt. How old were you at the time? Oh, I I I, I was about tw uh, I was about 28. And who was Ted Berelich? He, uh, he was my stepfather. So you knew the subject matter intimately. And what did the film reveal? It revealed the theme of demographic change, but it also uh, uh, revealed the uh, generational conflict be 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 between uh, a father's European values and his, his daughter's New World values. These are probably values that parents instilled in their children wanting them to have a better life yeah in this case they wanted a better life but the idea was that the better life could be uh, being involved in the store perhaps taking over the store not moving out 
to, to, to some place and uh, following your, your your bliss, as, as they said in the late 70s. Was yeah. the rookie filmmaker elevated, and did you go on to other big projects? Yeah, I, I, actually, the 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 film uh, it, it, it turned out uh, well. I didn't make it by by, by myself. I I I made it with, with my my partner at the time, Michael Myers, and 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 it went well. And it won a bunch of awards, and we were nominated for the uh, the uh, short film Palm Door in 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 Cannes. You went to Cannes, and and we never went to Cannes because, you know, for, for us it it, it 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 was just a kind of a lark. Like we weren't that career-minded with our first film. I, I take it it didn't win. It didn't win. No. No, uh, Juan was a uh, was a short on the Beatles. Well, that's t- tough competition. A uh, Ukrainian's grocery store in North End, Winnipeg, and the Beatles. Exactly, exactly. But you won a Genie Award for it. Oh yeah, yeah, we uh, we won a Genie and a, uh, a few other awards. Yeah. Tell me, just give me a sense of uh, a day in the life of a free a film and photography freelancer. You're always checking the bank account. You're wondering how the current project is doing, uh, worrying about this isn't working, happy that this is working. And while this is working, you're wondering what what you're going to be doing next. I love this country. <laughs> Somebody can do that in this country. <laughs> Since I was 28. Yeah. Is there something you wanted to tell me about your life that you're happy with or confused about or angry with or just cranky about or that that you love uh, no the, the only thing that i uh, i'm cranky about is the uh politically the, the inst- uh, institutionalized politically correct victimology which ha- has crept up uh, uh in the past few years which does a, a disservice to, to those who are really victimized. Who are the ones riding on that label who you don't think belong there? Well, kind of middle m- middle class uh, snowflakes. Usually university educated in the liberal arts. So you're thinking of me. <laughs> I'm a graduate in the liberal arts myself. <laughs> I'll agree that there's the, the, the flake part is accurate. <laughs> What's a snowflake? It's a snowflake who, you know, somebody's uh, sensitivities are, are, are hurt by somebody's words. You know, the, the idea that uh, free speech shouldn't hurt anybody's feelings. People have, have the right to hurt other people's feelings. Asha Kasha comes to you from CHRW 94.9 FM on the campus of Western University in London, Ontario, Canada. We're heard on CHMR 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland, on CKDU 88.1 FM in Halifax, on Local 107.3 FM in St. John, New Brunswick, on CJAS Radio 93.5 FM in San Agustin, Quebec, on CJLO 1690 AM in Montreal, on CFRC 101.9 FM in Kingston, on CFMU 93.3 FM in Hamilton, on CKMS 102.7 FM in Kitchener-Waterloo, on CJAM 99.1 FM in Windsor and Detroit, on CKLU 96.7 FM in Sudbury, on CILU 102.7 FM in Thunder Bay, on 101.5 UMFM in Winnipeg, on CJTR 91.3 FM in Regina, on CFMQ 98.1 FM in Hudson Bay, Saskatchewan, on CFBX 92.5 FM in Kamloops, on CIVL 101.7 FM in Abbotsford, and on CHLY 101.7 FM in Nanaimo. British Columbia. Uh, b- 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 uh, being a freelancer or, or 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 anybody who's involved in the arts, it, 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 it's not uh, not uh, an easy road to hoe. So few people have actually succeeded in it, and you're one of them. So what has set you apart? Uh, uh, well, lucky, I guess. Well, well, one of the things is lucky, uh, and the other thing is, I guess, uh, just, just the kind of an obstinance. If you were to do a series of photographs, a collection, or a film today about 
being Ukrainian in Winnipeg, what would that entail? Pick pictures. My favorite pictures are of of the Babas working in the gardens, uh, just making the you know, and and also uh, cramming for final exams in church, where, where, where they would come in their babushkas and, and say their prayers weekly, every week in church. And you're thinking of the great exam as being the next world, entry yeah. into the next yeah. world? Yes, 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 yes. And by that time, they had all softened up and were nice earlier <laughs> on. When they were young, they weren't so nice. They were, they were a little cranky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> maybe, maybe you had to be to survive in this climate and in this climate politically and and otherwise. It wasn't, oh, yeah. it wasn't a welcoming landscape, uh, and the people weren't always welcoming either. I, I, I agree 100 percent, and 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 the ones who came over as displaced persons after the Second World War, you know, going through, you know, uh, the Stalin and and then Hitler, and then the, the displaced persons camps, and coming over some of them to, to uh, Venezuela, and then to Canada. If they were cranky, they 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 had their their reasons. Can you tell me what you're working on now? Yes, uh, I'm working on a documentary film. It's a working title, On Becoming Canadian, A War Story. It's a, uh, it's a story of the contribution of Ukrainian Canadians during World War II. It's a coming-of-age story. Prior to World War II, the Ukrainians were, in many ways, uh, a disadvantage and a dis- and a discriminated against minority. After World War II, however, uh, as a result of, of their sacrifice, Canadian society was, 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 was more amenable to, to, to treating them as real Canadians. We hope, hope, hope to have this film finished by January. It's one hour of archival still pictures. That's accompanied by first-person oral histories of the Ukrainian Canadians who volunteered to serve in World War II. Hi, I'm Dania Yavorska. I live in Winnipeg. I'm a retired teacher. And you came here in your youth and stayed. I did. I did. Um, We were uh, traveling across Canada, a group of us, and trying to encourage uh, Ukrainian young people to come to the student conference we were organizing in Ottawa. And uh, we stopped in Winnipeg, and I just really liked it so much that... uh, we came back the following year, and I stayed, and everybody else went back east. You, you were a, a teacher, an, an academician. Uh, yes, I uh, taught in Ontario for four years, and then I came to Winnipeg. I didn't work as a teacher right away. I did some substitute teaching. I worked for a lawyer for a few months uh, as an administrative assistant, and um, I just... Uh, then I got a job teaching in Winnipeg, and I did that until I retired. What was it that charmed, enticed, embraced you about this province and this city? It was the people that I had met. Romano Nufrichuk got us involved in his choir. I was able to purchase and own a home that I don't think I would have been able to do out east. The Ukrainian Student Club here had 400 members. We worked on the radio, uh, CKJS, and I read the Ukrainian news. I'm a very huge advocate of the arts. We worked on films and painting sets and doing bit parts and films. And the air was clean here. It was a healthy place to live. Did you combine your love of arts and education? Uh, Absolutely, I did. I uh, did Super 8 filmmaking with students in grade 4. Do you remember what Super 8 is? I do remember what Super 8 is. It's a motel. It was also a format to make films. I also uh, believed very strongly in integrating all of the arts uh, into my teaching philosophy. And how did you meet our guest here? I met John at a party, and he came in from the cold, and we just kind of hit it off when we met, and I've known, known John since I moved to Winnipeg, I think. No, I've really enjoyed uh, almost all of John's films. John did a film about himself and stuttering, which was also 
really interesting and br- a brave project, I thought. Why was it brave for you to do a story about stuttering? In many ways, uh, the, the, the people who listen to people who stutter, very often they have the problem. But you made a film. What did the film say in the end? What was the takeaway? The, 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 the takeaway, which I've, I've learned, uh, it, 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 it took me a long time. Uh, uh, t- to learn that uh, you have to be who you are, and 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 if you stutter, stutter, and, and it always takes well most stutterers a long time to to, to discover that, be- be- because uh, we're, we're social animals, and stuttering involves uh, other people applying for a job, asking a girl out for a date as your kid, raising your hand in school, you know. So uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a difficult thing to do. I had a tendency to finish some of his sentences. I was more impatient than I was having a problem with his stuttering. A lot of time we also fear silence and we need to fill the gap somehow. Right. Yeah, ab- absolutely. And for, uh, for people who stutter, uh, the idea of filling the gap is dreaded. Yeah, I mentioned that in my film. But but in film, you know in a scene there's nothing more powerful than silence. Good point. That's why in film, people, uh, directors often hold a shot. Yeah, yeah. I lived in uh, the South End for a year looking after a friend's home. And the one thing that I uh, noticed, the difference between the North and the South people don't talk to you in the south end your neighbor you don't know who your neighbors are in in the north end people sit out on their stoops in the summertime you walk by you can have a conversation also people are extremely helpful if uh, there's a snowstorm if there's a, a disaster of some kind i think winnipeg has the reputation of 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 being very volunteer oriented right now uh, as we're talking uh, there's a uh, mayoralty election in winnipeg and ed ackerman is running for mayor and ed has come up with a uh, novel idea which sort of tells you a lot about the situation here in winnipeg between the north and the south he wants to implement if he gets elected a negative toll He's going to give, using taxpayers' money, of course, like all, all, all city programs, he's going to give people in the South End $10 to spend in the North End. That way, the South End people will get a chance to meet the North End people, and they will spend the money which will boost the economy of the North End. After that works, I told one friend, Ed wants to give the North Enders $10 to spend in the South End, to get to know the South End. And my South End friend said, well, in that case, we'll give them $15 to go back to the North End. <laughs> so that's, that's the difference between the North End and the South End of Winnipeg. In 2018, incumbent Mayor Brian Bowman was re-elected with 53% of the popular vote. Ed Ackerman, who proposed that $10 plan for North Winnipeg, garnered 1%. In 2020, The North End Revisited, a book by John Paskevich from the University of Manitoba Press, was shortlisted for a Shuchenko Foundation Kobzar Book Award. You're listening to Bandurus Jeffrey Stefaniuk and a folk song melody. It's from Disc 3 of the collection Golden Harvest, a musical celebration of Ukrainian Canadiana. We opened the show with the Kubasonics from Newfoundland and a song from their album Kuba Funland. The song is called Mala Yam Uja Piaka, which actually has nothing to do with yams, but... To settle the yam versus sweet potato debate, I went to ncsweetpotato.com. Depending on the variety, sweet potato flesh can vary in color from white to orange, even purple. The orange-fleshed sweet potato was introduced into North America several decades ago. In order to distinguish it from a white variety that everyone was accustomed to, producers and shippers chose to use the African word niami. These sweet potatoes have been labeled yams ever since. (laughs) 
the passage of time brings sad changes as well. Edward Danilo Ivanko was born in Winnipeg in 1938. He grew up in the North End. In the late 60s, he hosted the Ed Ivanko TV show. He appeared in many television dramas, Ryan's Hope, Chicago Hope, Third Rock from the Sun. Also Broadway, winning Critics Awards. In 2005, he was ordained a Ukrainian Catholic priest, served in Manitoba and British Columbia for many years. Father Edward Danilo Ivanko died in Winnipeg, November 18th, 2018. Theater and the priesthood, two lives lived fully by one man. Here's his song about two violins. Перша скрипка била левітка, а друга скрипка вечірний сум. Закохались в нього дві сестри весною, одна як танічка, друга мовдой день. Перша просила грати сумною, Друга хотіла веселе пісень, одна сміялась, плакала друга, ей, поєднались радість і туга. I'm your reporter Stefan Andrusiak, and I'd like to acknowledge that partial funding for Nasha Kasha comes from the Shuchenko Foundation. Back in a week, God willing, do milu izu strici za tijdin času, do rehi sluhaci. Ayak rozišli sjati pisni lunoju.